Insightful podcasts by informative hosts. Insights into Things, a podcast network. Welcome to Insights into Teens, a podcast series exploring the issues and challenges of today's youth. Your hosts are Joseph and Madison Whalen, a father and daughter team making their way through the challenges of the teenage years. Welcome to Insights in the Teens. This is episode 157, Surviving COVID and Stuff. I'm your host, Joseph Whalen, and my calm and collected co-host, Madison Whalen. Hi, everyone. How are you doing today, Maddie? I'm all right. How about you? Uh, I'm doing okay, I guess. So after, <coughs> excuse me, after a long break and a lot of things that have gone on in our absence... We're back and we have a lot to talk about, not the least of which is surviving COVID. Uh, but before we get into that, I do want to uh, implore, beg, plead. Borrow. Well, I'm not borrowing anything. We're, we're really well, just trying gonna... to, try. yes, I know, trying to uh, entice people to subscribe to the podcast. Uh, you can find both audio and video versions of our podcast listed as insights into things and we're listed on apple Podcasts, spotify google and so forth i would also ask you to write in give us your feedback tell us how we're doing give us your sh suggestions for uh, show topics we're always interested in getting feedback from folks you can email us at comments at insights into things .com. we're on twitter at insights underscore things um, we also stream five days a week on Twitch at twitch.tv slash insights into things, or you can get links to all those and much more on our official website at insights into things.com. Are we ready? Sure. That's really not very enthusiastic, but okay. Oh, well. So a lot has happened. A um, couple of big things happen. First of all, uh, as the audience can probably uh, see at this point, uh, you had your hair cut. Yep. So for the longest time, since you were, oh, geez, I don't know what, four or five years old, you let your hair grow and grow, and you would get it trimmed periodically. But now you went and did a, a big cut this time. Yep, 10 so inches. What was the uh, the impetus for that? Uh, well, I guess the main thing was really marching band. Um, when I started to notice that my hair was really a lot of work, um, and I, when it came to marching band, I had to put my hair up in a bun, and I could physically feel the weight of the bun because I had so much hair, and it was so heavy, and I'd always have to get mommy to always put my hair up in this big, complicated bun, because otherwise I couldn't really do it myself, um, and it all, and like, I had had issues with brushing my hair, it was really long hair, and there was also a lot of it, um, and there was... It had gotten to a point where I kind of figured that, what would it be like if I ended up cutting it? Uh, didn't want it to go too short, but uh, kind of wanted to get a decent amount off at least. So you said 10 inches. What was the, why was it 10 inches? <laughs> uh, because, because I had a lot of hair, uh, I was planning on donating it because I ended up hearing... I know that there was hair donations and such, and I remember that there was uh, another girl who had really long hair that ended up cutting it short for donation. And then I figured, like, hey, if I'm going to cut my hair, might as well put it to some good use. Okay. Uh, and when we went to the hair salon, they said that basically the minimum amount to cut for donation would be 10 inches. So that's what we went with. Okay. So a noble sacrifice for 
years and years of, of hair care, of which I have to say I was partially responsible for when I used to have to brush your hair and, and braid your hair. So Yeah. How does it feel? Honestly, it feels a lot better, especially when, like, I had first gotten it. It was, it was a weird feeling. It was like, it felt it was still too long, but also too short. It was a weird feeling. It's like, it felt like my hair was long, because I had a lot of hair, and I still had a lot of hair left. Well, obviously, I still have a lot of hair left after 10 inches were cut off, and it felt weird having it like so short because I'm used to it going all the way down my back and now it only goes to my shoulders pretty much and it also felt too long because it's like well 10 inches that I felt like that would cut off more of my hair right so is this is this what we're sticking with for now or are you gonna let it grow back <laughs> I probably won't let it grow back I might even cut it even shorter I'm not sure okay so it sounds like uh, mission successful yep awesome so the other big thing that happened was we got COVID, despite our best efforts not to. Yeah, more specifically, I got COVID, <clears> then <throat> I gave it to you guys. You did, and, you know, sharing is caring, right? Yep, that's how all diseases go. So let's talk about that. First of all, how did, how did COVID wind up in our house? Let's talk about that. So I'm not entirely sure when, where it directly came from, but my guess was that during our home show is where it happened because there were a ton of people there and we weren't really wearing our masks. So, and we kind of figured it was an outdoor area, so it wouldn't be that bad, but I'm assuming that's where we got COVID, or at least I got COVID. So I didn't really start seeing any major effects until Monday, and like even then it wasn't that bad. My throat was just kind of felt a little weird at the end of the day, but I didn't really think too much of it because I ended up having a specific cerebroid that kind of did that to my throat, so it's like, eh. And then Tuesday I started really not feeling well, but like I still went to school and I went to band, but I was obviously coughing a lot more and I also felt really kind of stuffy. Uh, but it got really bad when it was Wednesday and it was to the point when I, uh, when mommy ended up asking me in the morning, hey, y if you don't want to go to school, that's fine. And uh, because of my perfectionist attitude, I'm like, no, I'm still going to school. And like, I still wear my mask at school, so it probably wouldn't have been as bad as if I didn't wear a mask, so I wouldn't have infected people. Uh, but we decided not to do it, do band, because I just wasn't feeling well. Mommy also, like, mentioned that to me, and honestly, I wasn't complaining, because, eh, you know, skipping out on band, it ain't that bad. Uh, and then we ended up, now, I never thought it was COVID. I just felt like I was sick. It didn't really feel all that bad. Uh, but b just for safety, Mommy, and you suggest, I think you were the one that suggested that I take the test. Uh, and mommy ended up giving me the test, and I was staying in my room, obviously. Um, and then she came in with a mask and told me the test came back positive. Then we took another one, and it also came back positive. See, you passed the test twice. Nice. You didn't even study. Yeah. <clears throat> so I technically got it Tuesday. Didn't exactly quarantine, but... Mm. Yep. So, uh, I got COVID on my birthday, so that's fun. So, you wound up um, giving it to the rest of us, being the generous individual that you are. And uh, I think uh, that week, Mommy and I started developing symptoms. It had a little tickle in our throat on Friday night. And then Saturday, we didn't feel good. We took COVID tests, but they came back negative. So we just figured we had the flu because we had just recently, you and I had just gotten our flu shot. Yeah. Which is what we originally thought it was with you. Yeah. So we had gotten our flu shot that previous weekend. Or the night, one of the nights during the week, I think we got yeah. it. <clears throat> and then uh, then thir the Sunday, we, we felt worse. We took the test again because I wanted to make sure before I went back into the office that I wasn't positive, and we tested positive. And and really, to be honest with you, the first five days, because I wasn't allowed back to the office, I had to quarantine for five days from my office, three of the first five days, it was really just the severe cold symptoms that I had. And the last two days, I, I was pretty much fine. I was working from home. I couldn't go back in until Thursday, and Tuesday, I, I did a half day, 
remote. And then Wednesday, I was able to work most of the day remote without a problem. <clears throat> and then Thursday and Friday, I was fine. And then Saturday, well, Saturday, I was okay, too. I really didn't start to feel bad again until Sunday. And I'm still suffering from it. And this was almost over a month now since I had it. Um, and it was chest congestion. It was all up in the, you know, nasal congestion and everything. <clears throat> and it felt worse when that, that rebound hit me. And then I went back into the office on Monday. And Tuesday while I was in the office... Uh, I had other issues. I had a low bl blood sugar uh, count that made me feel woozy. I had a heart, high heart rate. Had all kinds of weird things happen. And then I went home early, and then I stayed home on Wednesday just to be safe. And everything checked out fine. In fact, it was funny. My my boss was so worried about me. She actually had texted me and told me to just work from home the rest of the week. But I felt fine, and I didn't want to be. Uh, be out. So I came in on Thursday and Friday and I was fine, but I just haven't been able to kick this. How have you been? When, when you got better, were you better or are you still having symptoms? Well, the thing was, um, I had actually start ever since Tuesday, I'd been really not feeling well. The coughing was honestly a really big problem. I started feeling better around Saturday and by Sunday, I was honestly much better. Um, and I've since pretty much kicked i've pr i've pretty much kicked most of the symptoms but um i have noticed that like i have certain times when i have a stuffy nose and that i'd cough but i don't really think it's from covid mainly just regular sickness but it could be a rebound i'm not sure but nothing like severe okay and and just for the record you know you were fully vaxxed you had your two vaxxes and a booster right yeah uh, I had two vaxes and two boosters, and, and we were scheduled to go that Friday for our third booster for Mommy and I. But when you tested positive, I said, we, we better wait because if you're positive and we have it and we just are asymptomatic, it, we may have a compromised immune system. And it's a good thing we did wait because we wound up testing positive two days later. So we've been masking everywhere we go. Except for the home show, obviously. Yeah. We've gotten our vaccinations. You know, we've done everything that we should be doing. I think it's just one of those things where everybody's going to get this eventually, no matter how hard you try. I think we're fortunate, at least I'm fortunate, that I got it very late. I'm one of the last people that I know, especially from around work. Um, we're, we're one of the last families to wind up getting it. And I think, if nothing else, that's given my body a chance to get the boosters and all the other stuff into me. And I'm still not doing 100% at this point in time. I can only imagine how bad I would have been had I gotten it earlier. And I have, you know, we've talked about it on the podcast, a number of underlying uh, health issues as well that contribute to it. So, overall, clearly it's survivable because we're here. Yeah. Very different effect on you than it had on me. Yeah. Um, I'm obviously older, overweight, health issues, stuff like that. So if nothing else, I think it's it's kind of a cautionary tale to uh, to make sure you do everything right to, to, one, not get it if you can avoid it, and two, make sure you seek the, the proper medical health when you uh, help when you do. Yeah, honestly, I think we're honest. We're kind of a good example of the lessons of you're probably going to get, sorry, you're probably going to get it at some point. These precautions aren't necessarily to stop you from getting right. it. What it really is, is a lot for you, is to make it survivable to the point where you don't have to be hospitalized and you don't feel as strong of the effects. I, I I agree 100%. I think what, what we did was we rendered it survivable. Uh, so we're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we're going to talk about uh, band and some Thanksgiving recap and some other stuff. We'll be right back. All righty. For over 
over seven years, the Second Sith Empire has been the premier community guild in the online game Star Wars The Old Republic. With hundreds of friendly and helpful active members, a weekly schedule of nightly events, annual guild meet and greets, and an active community both on the web and on Discord. The Second Sith Empire is more than your typical gaming group. We're family. Join us on the Star Forge server for nightly events such as operations, flashpoints, world boss hunts, Star Wars trivia, guild lottery, and much more. Visit us on the web today at www.thesecondsithempire.com. Welcome back to Insights in the Teens. Today we're talking about surviving COVID and stuff. And now we're going to talk about stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so we touched on uh, some activity with band. Band season obviously is over. How did it wind up? What's your overall impressions? How'd you guys do at your ACCs, your Atlantic Conference Championships? Give us the whole band spiel. All right, so this is technically my second year in band. I was now considered a veteran. Yay. Uh, and basically, this season, we ended up doing a show called Follow Me, which featured three different songs, one being Fame by David Bowie, three being Mad World by probably not the actual people that wrote it, but I don't really know who wrote it at this point, sorry, uh, and Grace Kelly by Micah. And basically, the whole thing thing was basically uh, a modern story about how you don't follow influencers and to be your own person and stuff like that and basically going through a self-discovery journey. Interesting how that was in marching band where you literally have to follow every move <laughs> you're told because otherwise you jeopardize the show. There is a certain irony to that. Yeah, that that's kind of what I was thinking during the entire show. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, we had... I got to experience what it was like to be a veteran. Uh, and basically, I also ended up switching instruments. I went from trumpet to mellophone, because Porco thought it would be better for me. So, fun. Um, so, I did the mellophone, and I was the only mellophone player, so that was an interesting experience. Where P Porco being your band director. Yes, Porco being my band director, who we've had on the show before. Uh... So, basically, it was funny. A lot of the mellophone parts, uh, I was mixed with different people. Uh, in the beginning, I was mixed with the low brass, then I'd be mixed with the saxophones, and then I'd finally be mixed with the trumpets, which is technically where mellophone is supposed to go. Uh, so, you know, it was interesting having to learn the different parts and not being able to really know what group I'm in, so that was fun. So, how did you guys wind up? So, we did, uh... We missed, all of us missed one show. Yep. Um, then we, you went to, which, I forget which one you went to where mommy and daddy still weren't feeling well. I don't know if it was called Champion. No, I don't think it was. I forget what it was. Yeah. You had a really rough schedule this year. You had a lot of schedule changes. You had a lot of scheduling <clears throat> that fell through. Yeah. So it was kind of a hectic year this year, not knowing where you were going and how many shows you were doing. Um, we wound up going to Atlantic, Co Atlantic Conference, Atlantic Coast Championships, ACCs. Yep. And these were done at Hershey Stadium out in Hershey, Pennsylvania. Which is kind of a cool venue to do it at. Yeah. Last year they didn't do it there because of COVID. Yeah. Uh, this year they did. And how did you guys finish? Um, we finished with a score of 93 point something. 93 point something. Don't know what the ending was. What place did you land in? Third place. So you were third place out of out a of total nine. of nine. Not too shabby. Yeah. So last year after band was over... Um, yeah, we, you had had a kind of a rough first year in band. Yeah. Um, I kind of had a rough first year with you in band too. I didn't realize 
the demands that were placed on you from a time and scheduling standpoint, uh, effort-wise, band camp, you know, in the middle of summer there and stuff. So there's all various challenges that you went through. And you ended band last year teetering on the fence of whether you wanted to come back or not. Decided, obviously, to come back. You did a second year here. Where do you find yourself now? Do you find yourself enthusiastic and missing band and wanting to come back? Or do you find yourself back on that fence again? Or do you find yourself teetering to the other side and and not wanting to do band again? Honestly, I've been teetering way more to the side of not doing band currently. Um, I know that I was on the fence after band ended uh, and I wasn't really on either side. I continued this year, and uh, the problems I noticed last year seemed to be slightly more amplified, as well as even more problems ended up seeming to arise as well. So have you come to a conclusion at this point in time where you're going to go with band? Right now, I'm honestly kind of determining whether I'm going to go and do like the ending stuff of the season or not at this point, because... I don't know. Like, I wanted to... My main goal is, if anything else, I was going to finish off the season, do the parades and stuff, and then maybe, if I wanted to end it, I'd call it there. But, knowing how Porco tends to be when it comes to people in band and his skills in keeping everybody there, maybe it might be best to not even really go and do that far. So, he's a good recruiter, basically. Well, I mean... (laughs) I started off mar- I started off the with the idea that I was never going to do marching band. It was way too crazy. Porco convinced me to do marching band. I also decided, yet yeah, never going to do mellophone. I don't like that. He convinced me to do mellophone. There's a pattern here and it's come to a point where I kind of need to start voicing up and stop listening to him. Well, hey, you know, if things don't work out for him in the music industry, I'm sure he can always get a job in sales (laughs) with a reputation like that. Mm. So you're leaning towards not coming back for band next year. At what point in time do you, what's the make or break point where you have to make a decision? Uh, Probably when it starts, probably the point when I really have to start making it is when the activities start, like basically the fundraisers and when the parades inevitably also So those parades are what, the beginning of summer, right? Yeah, pretty much. Okay. All right, so you have some time. You can can sort of let it stew for a little bit and see what happens. Yeah. So there's no rush, I guess, is what I'm getting at. Yeah. All right, so we'll talk about that, you know, later on in the in the school year and see where we stand. Uh, So it's holiday season, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, We finally got back together with the family uh, for Thanksgiving, which was the first time since COVID struck. Uh, We went up to see Jima, who was also on the show in the past for us. Uh, how did that go? What was it? Was it nice to get out and have a holiday? Finally? Was it too much? Were, Were there too many people? What are your thoughts? Honestly, it was not that many people. It wasn't our usual grouping, and there were only, like, three other people besides um, us. Um, And honestly, it was honestly pretty quaint, and normally the house is really crowded. But even then, I kind of started finding myself kind of trying to avoid most people. Um, I guess I just found it awkward to be in a room with everybody, because even though there's very few of us... They talk a lot, and they have multiple conversations going on at once, and it's hard to hear who's talking to who, so I had to take a few moments to break, but overall, it was nice to see uh, some of our family again. Yeah, I'm not, I was never one who was big on crowds either. Um, Part of my problem with that is, you know, my hearing isn't that great, and, and when I'm in a crowd, it's very difficult for me to distinguish individual voices from the the chatter that goes on in a room. So it's very hard for me to actually maintain a conversation with people. Uh, But it's always fun to get up there and see everybody, but the house is usually stuffy. You know, uh, I have allergies to cats and Jima has a cat. Uh, Although I did much better because she replaced the couch. The one couch, every year I'd go up there and sit on that couch 
knowing that I'm allergic to the couch. But I still sat on the couch, and by the time I, I had an allergic reaction, it was very uncomfortable. Uh, didn't have that this year, which was nice. Uh, you and I got out and went for a little walk at one point in time, which was nice. Um, we didn't have, she has a, a, a enclosed porch in the back there, um, which <clears throat> used to, she used to have a swing on there, a porch swing, and it was comfortable to sit out there. That wasn't there this year, so we kind of had to make do. Uh, but the food was fantastic. Um, in fact, I was under the gun to make my mashed potatoes and, and cheesecake, um, so we wound up making 10 pounds. Yep. 10 pounds of mashed potatoes this year, uh, of which you helped. Yep. And you contributed. This was the first year you officially contributed a dish to Thanksgiving dinner. What did you contribute? I contributed my signature banana bread that I found on the recipe online. That old family <laughs> recipe that we make all the time that somebody's family. Somebody's family, not ours, but it's a family <laughs> recipe, so... <laughs> So how does that make you feel, presenting a dish out there and getting people's feedback on it? Um, you know, I tried that with band. Didn't really work because nobody else ate it. <laughs> and I don't think anybody ate the banana bread that I did bring, so, you know. Well, no, Roger did. He did? Uh-huh. He commented on it. Oh. After I guilted him into eating my cheesecake, too. I had to, <laughs> I had to twist his arm to eat my cheesecake, too. Yeah. I don't really want to have to twist people into eating my banana bread, but... You gotta learn how to do sales. Sales yeah. and marketing. That's how you make the money if you're going to start producing stuff. Maybe I get Porco online with that. There you go. So, Thanksgiving. Success or fail this year? Honestly, success, uh, especially after there was a decent amount of confusion on how we'd be spending it. And, and you know, it was, it was... You're right, it was nice that it wasn't as large a crowd... I think it was a great way to kind of start easing back into some sense of normalcy. Um, hopefully, we'll have more of that moving forward. We're going to take another break and come back and finish up with a couple of less bits of stuff to talk about. Yay stuff. We'll be right back. Insights into Entertainment, a podcast series taking a deeper look into entertainment and media. Our husband and wife team of pop culture fanatics are exploring all things from music and movies to television and fandom. We'll look at the interesting and obscure entertainment news of the week. We'll talk about theme park and pop culture news. We'll give you the latest and greatest on pop culture conventions. We'll give you a deep dive into Disney, Star Wars, and much more. Check out our video episodes at youtube.com backslash insights into things. Our audio episodes at podcast.insightsintoentertainment.com or check us out on the web at insightsintothings.com. Welcome back to Insights in the Teens. We're talking stuff now. So it is the holiday season. We just had our Thanksgiving celebration. And we're rapidly moving into our family celebration. Now, we, we celebrate two holidays. Why don't you tell us about the holidays that we're going to be celebrating? So we celebrate both Hanukkah and Christmas because Mommy's Jewish uh, no, mommy's Jewish, and you're not. <laughs> right. I'm not anything at this point. <laughs> yeah, y you know. So we do both holidays, and uh, it just so happens that this year, Hanukkah ends up falling on one of the days of... Well, Christmas ends up falling on one of the nights of Hanukkah. Yes. Yeah, so Hanukkah starts on the 18th, yep. I believe, and it runs until the 26th. Uh, so the holiday season, I guess I can say it, gets to extend one extra day this this year for us. Because usually Hanukkah is usually over by the by Christmas or by the end of Christmas. It's not that often that it runs past Christmas. So that's kind of nice. 
Yeah. Also nice that it's not in November. Yes. That like last is year. painfully early, I think, when that hits. <laughs> yeah. Um, so Christmas shopping. Did you finish all your Christmas shopping? Well, I finished my Christmas shopping for Mommy. I'm planning on taking her out this weekend to do some Christmas shopping with you. You're buying well, stuff for me? For you, yeah. That's awesome. There's a $650 Darth Vader statue I want. Mommy will show you. <laughs> yeah. You can afford that, right? <laughs> yeah, you can afford it. Whether or not you buy it for me or not, it's a different story. So the, the I started buying early this year, actually. And I'm, I was technically done buying before Thanksgiving. So I have all the required gifts I need to buy. Yep. But I just keep buying stuff. Yeah. That's the one thing for me about the holiday is the one thing I like the most about the holiday is giving gifts. Um, it's nice to receive them. I'm not like. If there's something that I want, I'll buy it. Yep. I won't wait till the holidays. I'll just buy it. It's the same attitude I have about clothes. I hate buying people clothes for Christmas. Novelty stuff's one thing. But, like, my mother used to be like, oh, I bought you socks for Christmas. Well, no, if I need socks, let's just go get socks. That shouldn't be a present. It should be a necessity. So that's why I've always kind of had a thing about buying clothes for Christmas. In fact, we have a box, that, another Disney box that came today. I have to open up and see what's in there. I don't even, yeah, I kind just of buy stuff. I, I see stuff that looks cool and I buy it and it shows up and I don't even know what it is until I open the box. So it's always a surprise for me too. Hmm. Um, and I think this time of year, my Amazon or Amazon delivery guys really hate me because they get to bring so many boxes to the house. Hmm. Is there anything you are looking forward to for the holidays? Uh, I guess what I'm looking forward to is kind of the decorations. Uh, the it, Declaration of Independence? <laughs> are you kidding? Sorry, the dad jokes don't get any better than that. Yet they don't. Um, but I especially enjoy uh, decorating when it comes to the holidays. Uh it's always fun to kind of decorate our tree. Uh, it was really fun last year because we were specifically doing a Star Wars theme because we ended up doing this. Uh, we ended up doing Haunted Mansion themed for the Trunk or Treat for band last year. And then we did uh, Star Wars for Christmas. We were going to do Star Wars for Trick or Treat, but, you know, you guys weren't feeling well. But, you know, COVID. <laughs> so. <laughs> uh, so I think this year we were going to do Haunted Mansion theme. Uh, so that'll be fun to try out, you know, basically Nightmare Before Christmas-ish. So that would be fun. <laughs> yeah. It'll be even more fun if, if we wait until Christmas, but that's a whole nother thing. Well, yeah. Anyway, uh, so is there anything you're looking forward to, any presents you want? Um, thing is, I'm kind of lenient with what I, uh, want would want for presents there's occasionally stuff that i'll ask for like the one time i asked for the hunger games books because i like the story and uh and it tastes it... really good <laughs> yeah right um and like it... occasionally there's like stuff that i wanted to get myself but i uh, never got the chance to so you figure instead of spending your money you just wait and have us spend our money that's smart like that. That's fiscal responsibility, <clears throat> which we did a podcast on, by the way. I know. I've been here. So is there anything you want for Christmas? You asked, The one thing you would ask for was uh, a purple sweatsh uh, ho purple hoodie. Yeah, because uh, it was basically the color for our uh, class pride or whatever it was. And uh, the one purple hoodie I had was getting very tiny. On my body, and it was very uncomfortable. It wasn't the hoodie that was changing size, sweetie. It's you growing up. I know. Up. It's me difference. growing up, and the hoodie wasn't fitting me anymore, so I kind of wanted another purple hoodie so that I could still wear a hoodie if I wanted to for the spirits. So is there anything else that you want? I mean, I still kind of have the generic ideas, like still very into SpongeBob, anything SpongeBob. As demonstrated by your shirt there. Yep. So, anything Spongebob related that I don't already have, I guess. Okay. Um, and then Pusheen 
interested in Pusheen. Okay. Uh, there's the mini brands. Um, you know, kind of just generic. Just the usual stuff you're looking for all year long. Yeah, the thing is, Mommy actually kind of just takes me shopping, and when I see something that I like, she'll just say, okay, never, don't look. So like, there's no one big thing that you want, then? Not really. Not this year, at okay. least. All right, so there's a there's a trip that we've got coming up, too. Where's that to? Um, you don't even remember, do you? Comic-Con? Yeah, where? I don't know. Ocean City, Maryland? Oh. You know, where I broke my rib last year? Oh, God. <laughs> Pretty sure you didn't break your rib, otherwise you would have gone to the hospital. No, I broke it, trust me. There's nothing they can do for a broken rib. Okay. I, I can literally feel the, the rib moving, so it was broken. Okay, cool. Uh, so we're going down there. F last year we went down for the first time for Ocean City Comic Con, and they did a big holiday light display down there uh, in a park right next to the beach. Oh, so that's where we're going. Yes, so we're, we'll be going not this weekend, I think the weekend after that. Um, yeah, I think she, mommy ended up saying that it was uh, l next weekend we were doing it. And you got and you guys were both working half days, and she promised that she'd pick me up early. Well, there you go. Well, not pick me up, but just pick me up. Just pick you up yeah. and then put you down. <laughs> pick you up and body slam you. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so that's something to look forward to. I, I love doing the light shows. We'll do that one. We'll usually do uh, Shady Brook Farms. Um, yeah, we haven't done that. We didn't do that for Halloween. I really hope we can do that for Christmas. Yeah, we should be able to do it for Christmas. They have a couple in the area here now, which is nice. They had the one at the racetrack we went to that was less than desirable. And there's another farm near us that we'll do. Uh, so hopefully we'll highlight these on one of our entertainment insights and entertainment podcasts. Yeah, and there was the other one with like Friesmeister with like the one big that's display. The other, yeah, that's the yeah. other one. The other farm that we went to. So that's sort of the stuff that I get into this time of year is going through those things. Or if we if we go to Shady Brook and it's not raining, we'll sit by the bonfire there and roast marshmallows and stuff. And that's fun stuff. Yeah. And then I'll be terrified by Santa. There you go. With my excuse being that I was Jewish. <laughs> well, you know, at this point in time, there's really no reason to be afraid of Santa. He's just, you know, there now. You know? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so the last thing I did want to talk about is, is actually kind of one of the things that we had talked about during Thanksgiving, you and I, uh, and that's some of the challenges that you're running into at school, some of the things you're running into there. And, and the big one, I think, that kind of stuck out to me was the honor society stuff. So let's let's kind of touch on that a little bit there. So obviously from an academic standpoint – uh, straight A's, you're going to kind of ace your way into there. And when I was in school, that was really all you needed, was you needed good grades to get in. You had to keep a certain grade point average to get into honor society. And uh, apparently nowadays, you have to have a certain number of activity points. And depending on what you do, you get points. So, for instance, being in band, you get four points. Uh, the big things, the big sports, the stuff that's long-term that has a lot of requirements, a lot of uh, commitment, you get four points. And then some of the other clubs you get two points for. And there's a requirement for 10 points. What are your thoughts on honor society? Is it something you've wanted to do? Are you motivated to do? Do you care about it? Is it is it on that bucket list or is it just... Like for me, it, I never thought I'd get into it myself because I didn't have the the academic scores for it and I wound up getting into it for uh, my business class at the time but it was never something I aspired to is it something that you aspire to what are your thoughts on it to be honest never really aspired to it never really understood why I needed it why it existed I just knew I guess a lot of it was just consistent of smart people didn't know why I had to be a part of it never really aspired to it Okay. So the requirements that are on there require 10 points. So with band being questionable for next year, you 
in order to get into it, you would need 10 points, which all the other clubs you've looked at are two points each. So you'd mathematically have to participate in five clubs. Are there five clubs on that eligibility list that have caught your eye that you're interested in? Are there any clubs that have caught your interest that you're interested in, in partaking in? I wouldn't say that there's five clubs, but, you know, some I'm kind of interested in. I did the one-hour club meeting. Thought that was pretty cool. Okay. Were there anything, were there any other clubs in there that you might be interested in doing? And and I asked that not under the idea of let's do five clubs to get into honor society. I ask because these kids don't join the clubs to get into honor society. They join the clubs to have fun, to socialize, to enjoy themselves, stuff like that. So you did the art club. You were talking about doing the tabletop gaming club. You missed the meeting for that one. So we'll have to wait for that one. Is there anything else there that would interest you regardless of whether or not you're going for honor society? I don't really remember the list, so I'd probably have to look at them again. Okay. Those were the two that I was focusing on. Is there any desire that you have to participate in different things at school? Or are you fine just going to school, learning, and coming home? I was kind of fine without the clubs I kind of wanted. Last year, I, well, seventh grade, I wanted to do it. COVID happened. Wasn't really able to do it during eighth grade. Was going to do it during ninth. Never really got into it. I, I say that, like, COVID kind of had a lot to do with my kind of disinterest and not really joining the clubs. Right. Yeah, I think COVID, COVID's a great scapegoat for a lot of bad things that have happened in the last couple of years, you know? Do you have any of your friends that are in any of these clubs? Um, uh, there weren't too many people in our club. I'm not sure if my friend Aaron is going to join it because he, uh, he only ended up going into the club because, uh, he missed his bus and he knew that I was going to be there. So, uh, he just went there. Okay. Well, there you go. Uh, Lucas is, my friend Lucas is in tabletop gaming. So hopefully when I actually get to go to the meeting there, uh, it'll be good. Okay. Anybody else any in any other groups or clubs that you know of? Not that I know of. Is there anything that you'd want to do at school, whether or not they're offering a club or not? Is there anything that you'd like to do? I mean, there was the Gay Straight Alliance Club that I had wanted to join, but uh, they ended up saying that that's not going on this year. Right. Did we ever find out why? Was it just a lack of uh, participation or... I never really asked. Yeah, like I don't know what's required. I don't know if there's a funding requirement for these clubs, if you if it's a volunteer basis, because I'm assuming you've got adults that are running these things. I don't know if it's a funding thing or if they're just volunteering to do them. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, that's something we'll have to take a look at the list and see if there's anything that's interested. Uh, I, I did a couple of different things at school myself. Obviously, I played uh, football. Briefly, until I shattered my ankle. Uh, I did chess club. Uh, did choir, obviously. But I, I didn't get all that involved in the extracurricular stuff. I was working full-time from uh, the time, well, part-time when I was in 10th grade on. So I, I didn't have a lot of free time to do anything. And I kind of look back on it now and, you know, kind of wish I had gotten more involved. Like stuff... We, we, one year for choir, we had done a musical, um, and it was done pretty much like a stage production. And, and I was, you know, as a, a member of the choir, I had to sing in it, but I didn't have any lead parts or anything. So it was just background. But the one thing that I really enjoyed was building the sets for it and coming up with creative ways to present certain things. So I kind of wish I had been more involved in that sort of. Uh, stuff in drama club and building sets and stuff like that. Um, so it's one of those things you never know. You know, I never thought I'd be interested in doing anything like that until I wound up in that situation. So, so that was all I had on our stuff to talk about. Was there, we've got a few minutes. Was there anything else that you wanted to talk about? Um, 
Hmm. Talk about our, our adventurous trip to GameStop and you realize how many <laughs> games you could buy for the Switch. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's the only other thing that like has now opened my horizon. Just like, wow, there's so many cool games out here. Wow, I really am uncultured when it comes to that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of stuff. There's a lot of stuff for the Switch. There's a lot of online stuff, too. I don't know if... I think they still have their subscription service where you can actually just download games right to it, too. Uh, so that was fine. It, what, what I found interesting going to GameStop, because I hadn't been to a GameStop in kind of years, I think. They had more collectible stuff in there than they had video game stuff. <laughs> it was like walking into a Think Geek or something like that, you know? Yeah. So that was interesting. So, all right, that's it. I think this was a great way to kind of ease back into things. Hopefully, we'll get into the cadence of doing these on a, a more regular basis now. Uh, we did have a scripted episode that we were going to run today, uh, but I wanted to kind of go off script and just sort of have this conversation and, and do a recap and set us up for next week's episode. Next week, we'll be talking about uh, fighting in school. Yep. Uh, and hopefully, we'll have a lot more interesting podcasts coming in the near future, we do have to do our, our holiday. We're coming up on the gun for our holiday special, so we have to put something together pretty quick for that. Yeah. Uh, but that was it. Did you want to have any closing remarks? Not really. No? Okay. We'll just sort of fade to black here, I guess, then. <laughs> Before we do go, uh, I would once again uh, invite you to... That's the word I was looking for. Invite. Uh... I couldn't couldn't get it to come out before i would like to invite you to subscribe to the podcast you can get audio and video versions of this podcast listed as insights into things pretty much anywhere you can get a podcast uh apple google stitcher i think we're on stitcher i don't know if the videos show up on stitcher or not uh podbean i know we're up on uh, i'd also invite you to write into us you can email us at comments at insights into things.com uh, you can find us on Twitter at twitter.com slash insights underscore things. We're on Facebook at facebook.com slash insights into things podcast. We're on Instagram at instagram.com slash insights into things. Or you can get links to all that and much more on our official website at insights into things dot com and you and don't forget to check out our other two podcasts insights into entertainment hosted by you and possibly mommy and insights into tomorrow our monthly podcast hosted by you and possibly my brother sam even though they're not really monthly podcast anymore we're gonna see what happens yeah we're gonna get back into things we we had a lot of stuff going on with band and covid and everything else so a lot more podcasts coming out of us in the near future that's it, folks. Another one in the books. Bye, everyone. Bye.